Hi, I'm Stephen James with Uva Imports, and I'm here with Katie and Janine from Vinateca. Hi. Hey, guys. Um, we are introducing the new six pack, which we're calling uh, Buy Six, Feed Five, because we've partnered with Staple House and the Giving Kitchen to feed out of service, um, out of work service industry people. Uh, this is now the third pack that we've done, and uh, we've got a fun video uh, attached here uh, for the selections. And we have a couple different video options here in the in the six pack. Paolo De Maria will be introducing his uh, wine, and I also have a separate video with the Padre Garona Rosé uh, with Phil from Specialty, who distributes that wine here in Georgia. Um, but very excited to have. Uh, Katie and Janine, will you introduce the six pack for us? Sure. All right. So here's the first wine. This is the De Marie, the Luigi, uh, Pet Nat from Piedmont. And then also have the Padere Garona. This is the Fin Rose uh, Rose, Piedmont as well. Holy Navarsi, too. And then we have the Vicus uh, Falangina um, from Apurnia. The Carne Rosso, the Mercado Carne, one of our best selling wines at the store. You want to take the Sangiovese? And then the, we have the Sangiovese from Zingara and then the Tenuto McCann uh, Rafasco. Yeah, awesome. And so uh, last week we did the Vicus uh, Alianico, and today, uh, this week, we're going to be doing the Falangina which is one of my favorite white wines in our portfolio. Um, but uh, we'll be starting off the, this uh, tasting with Paolo introducing his brand new wine. Uh, a little background on the pet nat is that, uh, you know, short for petalant natural um, and a, a very exciting style of wine that's really catching uh, on like wildfire. And this, is, uh, this wine landed in the US for the first time just a few weeks ago. And it's the first time they've ever attempted a, a pet net style. So very excited to see what people think about that. Uh, stay tuned and uh, for more information on some of the wines that we are featuring this week. Thank you. I want to introduce Luigi, our Rosato pet net wine. Pet net is the shorthand for Petillan Naturel, a natural sparkling or a Metodo Ancestrale. Our Luigi is 70% Arnaise and 30% Nebbiolo. The two grapes have been harvested from our organic vineyard and together they are vinified like a white wine without skin maceration. The fermentation is spontaneous with native yeast in steel tanks and is bottled before fermentation is completed. This is the reason for the natural carbonation and sediments that remain inside the bottle. The beautiful rosé color come from Nebbiolo grape and the bubbles are vibrant with a fine prolage. The bouquet recalls yeast, bread crust, flour and fruity notes. The wine is dry, orange blossom, mandarin peel, and some red fruit like raspberry, cherry. There's a nice acidity, the wine is very fresh, pleasant, with a light tannin at the end. The bubble make this wine perfect as an aperitivo or for some fatty, salty food, like hamburger, fish and chips. For a unique project, we create this playful label that reflects our vision to create something fun, new, and different. The next wine we have here is, uh, this is an image of Poderi Garona. Uh, this is the major vineyard that is on their property. Uh, they have just about three hectares, uh, about six acres of vines planted here in the Boca region, which is very unique in the, what they call Alto Piemonte, the northern part of the uh, Piedmonte region. 
Uh, this DOC of, of Boca is the highest DOC in all of, of Piedmont, and it's on an ancient collapsed volcano, uh, which really gives these wines distinction. Uh, so excited to have these wines in the U.S. for the first time, and we're tasting the rosé today that just landed. Um, I am just mad about this Finrose rosé. The Finrose, the name comes from the fact that this is grown inside a national park, Parco Naturale Monte Finera. Um, the Mount, Mount Finera is uh, this uh, national park, which includes this, uh, these archeological sites. Not only did they find one of the Neanderthals here, uh, but also this ancient volcano was formed when Europe and Africa collided to create the Alps. Uh, and so it gives you this uh, beautiful picture of uh, what happened here many, many uh, years ago. And this wine region is coming back from near extinction. The total hectares planted here for Boca is 25 hectares uh, and growing, but it used to be over a thousand before Phylloxera and before the World Wars and the Industrial Revolution, which really sort of derailed uh, wine making production, especially for indigenous varietals in Italy. And speaking of indigenous varietals, uh, this is the famous Piedmont grape Nebbiolo. It's blended with Vespolina. Vespolina adds this wonderful, bright, uh, elegant floral component and just a touch of Uvarara. Uvarara is a part of the Bernarda family. Uh, which is uh, a unique strain of the Uvarara grape is here in Boca. Uh, Phil, you have, I believe, the Finrose Rosé from Papier de in front of you. Uh, this is- I do. Fantastic, yep, there it is. Um, so real quick, uh, we have a map here. This is the Piedmont, a close up. If you're familiar with the Piedmont at all, then you know Barolo and Barbaresco. Uh, Barolo down here in the bottom. Uh, Barbaresco is here in this uh, jumbled mess of different regions in the south, but way up here where you see a lot less going on, Boca is here in the, uh, the gray. And even though the DOC for this rosé is the Colline Navaresi, which is the, uh, the red outline here, this is the Colline uh, Navaresi, uh, the, all the fruit for this uh, wine is coming from within Boca and from a very old vin vineyard planted in 1974. Uh, Phil, what do you think of the rosé? How's it showing? Oh, it's beautiful. Um, I feel like we've been talking about this wine for, for a long time. Uh, you know, we've been carrying the, the red Boca from, from Poderi Garona for a few months now. Um, but we've, I, I think from the, from the get-go, that what was most exciting uh, you know, not the most exciting, but but was definitely exciting for you was the the rosé, um, which I, I still can't quite believe that they're making rosé off of this vineyard that is uh, is so rare and 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 such small quantities. It's kind of uh, kind of amazing, um, and and the wine uh, doesn't disappoint. Um, super. Um, soft and, and elegant, um, has, a, has a, of course, great minerality and, and acidity and freshness due to the, the high elevation. Um, it's got this kind of like um, watermelon rind, white strawberry, you know, not, nothing overpowering, um, uh, but, but just food friendly and, and really, really delicious. You know, um, in the bottom corner here, you have, uh, you have, Renzo Duela, it's his family's vineyards uh, that create this wine. And in, uh, you know, his, his broken English and, and my really bad Italian, um, I didn't quite understand why he said it's a very small vineyard that uh, makes this rosé and why he needed to make rosé with it. He was saying something, explaining to me that it doesn't, it wasn't um, quite what it needed to be to be the red wine, but it, I didn't quite understand the, the justification. But anyway, <laughs> The uh, food pairings. What do you? What do you? What do you? What do you? When you taste this wine, what do you want to eat? Um, you know, definitely. Um, I think uh, something something salty and and even again uh, like the prosecco in that 
it has the acidity and, and freshness to, to um, pair well with something that's a little more more fatty. Um, you know, I think uh, rosés are the, I mean, they're, they're so versatile. They can pair with um, such a variety of, of uh, protein from poultry to fish to, um, to even some, you know, um, uh, pork and uh, and even full, fuller bodied rosés can with with uh, red meats, but uh, but you know I, I think this one would be great with with uh, some heartier seafood. Um, you know even even uh, raw oysters would be fantastic. That salinity and minerality really come out. Um, but yeah, I, you know this one to me is not one to, to overthink when you're uh, when you're when you're debating pulling the cork uh, with a meal because it's gonna probably go with just about anything awesome yeah for me like a uh, shrimp and grits could be really fun with this for sure yeah. Um, but yeah like you said rosé is probably the most uh table friendly versatile style of wine when i go to dinner parties and people are like bring a bottle of wine i'm like if i'll ask well, what are you cooking and they're like well we're just gonna have this and that you know people are bringing different things i'm like all right i'm bringing rosé uh especially one with good structure like the fin rose well, this is going to be a new experience for everyone who tastes this wine. This wine has never been available in the U.S. before. Uh, so super excited to get feedback on these wines. Hopefully people will enjoy this new uh, rosé from High Elevations and the Northern Piedmont from Vespolina, Nebbiolo, and Uvarara. All right, the first wine we have with Katie and Janine today is the uh, Vicus Falangina. Um, really excited to have these wines with us uh, at, um, at Uva Imports. Uva's passion is uh, Italy, uh, but we have ventured outside of Italy. Uh, we have this beautiful image of the Campania region, what, what makes these wines so unique is the volcanic soil. And you can kind of see this in the higher elevations. This is the Apennine Mountains. The, uh, the mountains that run the spine of Italy, they are, we're here in Campania, which is just, just south of Rome. Um, and you have the Amalfi Coast, you have um, Mount Vesuvius, uh, Naples, and uh, about 50 miles inland, you, you have these mountain cliffs, and then you go down into a valley, and then you go back up into the mountains. Uh, and I mean, it snowed here. I put this in the, in the information on the, on the sheet. It snowed here inches, several inches, April 1st uh, at the winery. They're right just south and inland from Benevento, uh, which is one of the larger cities in the area. And they're kind of in this, this uh, red region, which is uh, the, the Terrazzi DOCG. Um, so the, the Falangina is different than a lot of Falangina and Campania in that it's coming from these volcanic slopes at high elevation. And the texture is really what kind of grab, uh, hits me about these wines. Uh, what, are you, what are you getting from the, the Falangina? I was just about to say there's an interesting floral note to it that um, is, is unique to the, this wine for sure. And it's... Um, got a lot of minerality it's got a lot of freshness but there's white flowers that are that are definitely apparent mm -hmm. I love I love its elegance um, I love uh, how round and ripe the fruits are but how balanced that is with that freshness in the back end and the acidity yeah there's there's definitely ripe, ripe fruit to it and roundness it's really nice usually with on again I um, I think about a little less weightiness to it, and I like how this has a nice weightiness to it that would yeah. give it a good food friendly quality. Definitely. One of the most food friendly wines for me, uh, this is gonna be great with a white pizza. It's gonna be great with uh, Brussels sprouts, any of your like more bitter greens. Mm -hmm. uh, I love this. Uh, we, I had a ramp pizza yesterday and uh, from Grana. Uh, which is uh, the new place uh, from uh, the guys at White Bull. And we had a ramp pizza and nice. took a bottle of this and it was just spot on. I was so excited. Uh, it was great with that. Um, as well, we had their carrot dish. Uh, this was also really fun with root vegetables. Any other foods that like kind of uh, jump to mind when you taste something like this? 
Well, with all the greens, maybe a nice summer salad. Uh, you know, some, who knows, the frise, a little kale, a little. Yeah, kale you know, salad, perfect. Leafy green you want to throw in there, yeah. I was thinking fish. Like, a, if you had just a very simple whole fish with mm. like a, like a little pesto or a little um, uh, salsa verde on it would be really nice with it. Nice. Then you'd have that little bit of mintiness, but it would be really lovely with this wine. You guys are making me hungry. <laughs> uh, We're waiting to eat our whole fish in a second. <laughs> I love whole fish. My wife jokes at me because uh, I, I, anytime there's whole fish on the menu, I get excited. I go, whole fish, whole fish. Mm -hmm. whole fish. Um, and, uh, you know, this is one of these things that I love to point out about the Vicus wines. This is made by the, the uh, Pepe family. Milena Pepe worked in, uh, in France, uh, studied wine making in France uh, in the Rhone Valley before she moved back to take over her father's estate in 2005. Uh, and she's one of the leading figures in the Campania region uh, right now and really making waves with these uh, beautiful wines. Uh, hopefully, I think this is a just a shoe in for you know people's favorite white wine uh, at an affordable price. I I think there'll be quite a few people who will be coming back for more. So the next wine we have with us uh, in the six pack is the Mercado Carne. Uh, the Mercado Carne has a fun little label with these uh, little farm animals. Carne means meat. Mercado means market, and uh, this was an, the inspiration of this wine was Adam traveling throughout Italy. And if you've ever been to Italy, especially in the countryside, you're eating in these little osterias, trattorias, these small mom and pop restaurants, and also you know, you're work, you're in these little markets, and um, they they present wine in a different way than we do here in the U.S. They they fill up large, uh, oftentimes uh, dimmy johns or large casks and they bring this back to their, their shop and they pour it out by the carafe uh, and by the glass. And it's a very unfussy, simple, everyday style wine. It's usually a blend, a local blend from the local winery. And it's, a lot of times this type of wine is not even bottled. Uh, it's, uh, it's meant to be just drank young and fresh, uh, pulled straight from the tank. Uh, so this is kind of what we have in, uh, sort of were inspired by. Uh, the Mercado is a blend from Southern Italy, uh, from Puglia, and um, from Puglia and, and Sicily. Let me share my screen here. So we have tasty, tasty wine. That's a that's a Fox original right there. Like it. And uh, a little picture of the market. Um, so we have. In the, in the grapes in the Carne Primitivo, near to Troya and near to Avila. The near to Troya, for me, is the secret weapon. And we've slowly increased with each vintage more of this near to Troya in the blend. Um, what, do you, what do you get off the nose? And uh, what, what's this wine taste like to you? I was just about to ask near to Troya. I, I'm actually not familiar with that grape. Um, where is its homeland? Here in Puglia and Calabria. OK. You'll see a little bit of it too, I think, it, as well in Campania, parts of Campania. Uh, but it is a uniquely Southern Italian varietal. And uh, Jenny and I were talking earlier about Ian Daggett uh, in Native Grapes of Italy talks about how he predicts this is the rising star of Southern Italy. Oh. I haven't had enough near to Troya to really understand the grape on its own. Uh, I've only had three different bottlings of near to Troya and they were all so different in style. One was like a natural wine. The other one was a little more mass produced. And, uh, but it does to me remind me a little bit of Malbec or maybe even Beaujolais. It's very floral, purple fruits. That's kind of what I get from the, the grape. Well, I would say that this wine, um, has purple fruits on it and is definitely um, floral as well with but also has some black fruits too for the, sure. The black fruits coming from the Nero d'Avola and the Nero d'Avola is going to see a little bit of oak give it a little bit of structure but that Primitivo and the Nero Troia these are coming from Puglia and they're just it's all about the fruit it's all about that. Fruit. Yeah the fruit is I think it's more present on the nose like it's very uh, black fruited dark red fruited um, but the palate, it just, it just kind of goes away. Um, left with this kind of crunchy mineral earth or maybe like a, 
a black soil earth. It's really cool. You get some black fruit in the mouth too, yeah. but yeah, you're right. It has definitely a minerality to it. It's very, it's very drinkable. Mm -hmm. It's very, I'm sitting outside on a patio. I have cheeses. I have charcuterie. Yes. I have serrano ham. I have um, nothing. I'm just drinking some wine. <laughs> Even salad, like, well, we were talking about salad. salads earlier, earlier, which is a hard thing to pair. Like, this would be okay with a salad. Very fresh, yeah. Yeah, this, this, is, a, this is what we, we at least associate with, with everyday Italian wine. This super drinkable, super versatile wine. That, uh, you know, it's not really, you could we could talk about r really pairings, but it's like, it really just, it's just, it's just to go with, you know, just having a good time. Uh, yeah, everything and nothing. Yep, I put on here, you know, I think, uh, in the in the notes on the on the page uh on the on the sheet is that you know i recommend chilling this a little bit especially if you're yeah. going to be out on the patio you know you put it in the refrigerator for 30 minutes or or keep it room temperature and when you take it out to the patio put it on a little ice and then you can kind of take it on and off the ice as you're drinking it to kind of uh, get it to the right temperature that you want it to be um it doesn't need to be very cold but a little chill will go a long way um, a lot of times people ask us too about when when they go to when they go travel to Italy, um, and they have it's just a wine that's like you were saying just brought to their table in a liter bottle, and they have no idea what it is, but it's one of the best things they've ever drank. This is a really good, as you were saying, expression of that style of wine, where you're like, this is just good wine, period. Yeah. 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 It's an everyday drinker. It's an everyday drinker for sure. Okay. Next up, we have the Zingara Sangiovese, uh, one of my favorite wines in the Zingara line. Uh, Zingara is very important to Uva Imports. Uh, this is a project that Adam Richard started with two uh, winemakers, uh, one in Friuli, uh, making some beautiful fresh wines there, and then one here in Tuscany. Uh, so this is an unoaked Sangiovese uh, from the southeastern part of Tuscany, and um, it's really just a, a perfect sort of everyday wine. Uh, I'm going to share my screen here and uh, just show a couple of quick slides. Um, what are you guys getting from this uh, San Giovese? Definitely some black fruits, um, some ripe raspberry. Yeah. A little black cherry, maybe some. Uh, oh, definitely black cherry. A little stewed fruit, too. So definitely. Um, Feels like it's been cooked down a little bit. Some herbal notes to it for sure. I'm getting a little pineapple sage. Oh, interesting pineapple <laughs> sage. Yes. That's a that's a very specific call. Very well, she only eats pineapple sage, so I'm also a new gardener too. So very cool. That I might be the tomato leaf a little too. True, like we're we'll talking that. about. Yeah. The uh, the sage that's interesting as a I think gardening and really understanding. The different herbs uh, really helps uh, people understand wine better uh, because there's there's so much nuance and the different we I always just generically say like herbaceous <laughs> uh, where the there's some very specific flavors here I think some sage in your pasta uh, would also really help uh, sort of connect this wine with the dish that you're making. Mm -hmm. What's the typical sage? I mean, if you there's I know there's a ton of different types of sage. Uh, sort of green, sage. softer. You know, it's it's more. It's I call it a soft herb because it's not present or prominent like rosemary or thyme. Like those are very um, noticeable. Noticeable, yeah. Without I was gonna say impressive, but um, it's a very it's a mild a mild aromatic. I will say. But you can tell that there's some sort of green component to it, but it's not grassy or, or intensely herbaceous. That, that sounds like a perfect description for this wine because uh, you mentioned the tomato leaf. That's something that I always call because uh, it's a very, del it's not super green. It's not super in, like, uh, you know, present. It's, it's a more subtle uh, element here where the fruit, the darker stewed fruits, are really what's showing here and really what makes it really fun with stewed tomatoes. So any tomato sauce, that sweetness that comes out in cooking tomatoes uh, kind of is how I feel the fruit expresses itself. It has a savory tomato-like character to the fruit component. 
Mm. I think also when you wrote up when you when pizza as as a as a perfect pairing as well as you have all those components as well you have the oregano you have a little sage in the sauce but then the light white cheese the a little pepperoni it'd be really perfect with this lime yeah the pepperoni too i mean i you know i was a vegetarian for 10 years um but and i still eat meat pretty infrequently but the this type of wine with some pepperoni the spiciness of a of a cured sausage type uh thing goes so great with so much uh, of the Italian wines. But this is definitely an everyday wine for pasta, like a meatballs and spaghetti kind of thing, or lasagna, even hamburgers topped uh, with cheese and fresh tomato. Uh, it's just a, a very versatile wine. It's a perfect wine for a six pack like this. All right, the last wine for uh, the six pack is uh, a very exciting wine for me. Uh, this is Tenuta McCann. Uh, McCann, the McCann family is in Portanone Friuli, and uh, they make some, not only some stunning white wines, uh, Friuli is one of the most famous Italian regions for white wine, but they make really fun, fresh, approachable red wines. And this one is one of my favorites. The, the grape is called Rofosco, uh, actually, the grape is called Rofosco da Poduncolo Rosso, uh, which Poduncolo is basically translates as stem, uh, and it's the red stemmed version of Rofosco. Um, Rofosco is one of the most ancient family of grapes. So, if you're familiar with Lambrusco, Lambrusco is also a family of grapes. There's a lot of these uh, grape families in Italy. I uh, I like to sort of uh, sort of talk about that and and how people understand this when it comes to Italian wine and why it's so diverse and sort of foreign to a lot of wine drinkers is in France you had a lot of the monks and uh, you know a lot of the clergy uh, really fine tuning uh, their grape varietals uh, Pinot Noir perfect example Cabernet Sauvignon and uh, you could kind of think of it as like pure breeds when it comes to dogs. So they fine tune these grapes to behave in a very certain way. And they were taking the clones and remaking the same plant. So when you, you go to a vineyard, uh, especially if you're buying your, vine, your, your vines from you know, a nursery, you're getting the same plant cloned over and over and over again. But when you go to Italy, especially uh, up until recently, you were, they were, the, the vines were being um, sort of re reused and propagated in a different way and in a more diverse way. Uh, Selection Marsal uh, is another example of, uh, you know, using the, the vines from your, your vineyard to, to graft and make new vines. Uh, but you'd have uh, 40 different clonal variations of the same grape in, this, in, a, in a vineyard. And then as that happens and expands, it's why Italy has more grape varietals than anywhere else in the world. Um, Rufosco is the ancestral grape to Corvina, um, the major grape in Amarone and Rapasso. It's also the ancestral grape to Toraldigo, uh, another culty wine. We were talking about uh, Elisabetta Foradori yesterday. Uh, so Rufosco is, is, is spawned a lot of these grapes, and it really came from more Eastern Europe. Uh, but it's here in Friuli, you have, uh, here's the, a little dot here up in the northeastern corner uh, where they're in the tiny town of Portanone. Uh, let's talk about the fruit character here, the, the character of the wine, the flavors. I mean, the first thing that I notice is this, there's, an, there's an absence of fruit, which is appreciated, uh, especially for a wine that I would more considered light bodied in style, mm -hmm. um, maybe teeter tottering into the medium, but it's, it's, it's very earthy. Like it's very rustic and yeah, the acidity is still there. It is there. And I, I definitely think it, I mean, I wouldn't say it's lacking any fruit. I think there's definitely an underlying bits of fruit, mm -hmm. um, but you have, yeah, a rustic, earthiness to it I this is kind of what I was expecting which is good like I it, I love this grape and I know it sounds so silly because we're talking about weird varietals that no one's ever heard of but um 
this shows really nicely and sometimes it can be overbearingly smoky and overbearingly um kind of i hate to say funky because that can mean a multitude of things but um this wine is i want to i want to drink it a lot yeah. of it like i i'm gonna put more on my glass i now. can see a chill on this as well for sure drinking it with or without food but i think food will make it really shine mm -hmm. um you know, yeah. uh, Katie, you mentioned this, uh, and that some of these wines can be super uh, smoky and or earthy, and um, overwhelmingly, they can be. Some, some, and 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 Rofosco, in some sense, uh, tell people like it kind of remind me of like a wet cigar, mm. <laughs> and uh, and to me that what what makes these wines from McCann family stand out is that uh, freshness of fruit, that balance. Uh, they're trying to make wines uh, i was just talking with the distributor yeah this morning actually about it and saying you know uh what they do here at mccann um giovanni ruzine is the winemaker and it's all about balance so they're not trying to do this bombastic style which so many times we get caught up in right especially in the beer world it's like how happy can you make it how high in alcohol you know how extreme and everyone's afraid of subtlety and balance. Uh, and these wines just from, from every single one of the wines in their portfolio is all about striking that, that perfect balance. And this, the earthiness, the smokiness is what makes this really perfect for the grill, for wines, uh, for foods that have a lot of char on them or for gamier meats or, or, or dark meat chicken. Uh, lamb ragu would be great, uh, but your pork dishes, really fun uh, for things that are gonna get a little bit of an open flame. I can definitely see that. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the great thing about this too is that when we talk about wines that are for the kind of climate that we're, we're drinking in right this second where it's you know 80 degrees outside and um, you wanna sit outside and have your dinner, um, this is a perfect kind of wine for that because it's, it doesn't have too much of anything. Like it's, it, it's really well balanced and goes with food that is made to eat outside. Nice. It actually would be really good with nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's made for food meant to be eaten outside. I, I like it. Trademark. Like it. Yeah, and the the last little line here I point out in the thing that I love about the McCann wines is one, they're vegan. So wow. wines uh, you know, they they settle naturally, so they're not using anything to like clear the wine with like you know, you know, using egg whites or milk products to like you know, uh, find the wine. Um, it's certified sustainable with organic practices and they, they're very conscious of the amount of sulfites they use and they're dialing it back uh, until they've, and they've really fine tuned like what's needed to protect the wine and not anything more. It's good, we love that. Yeah, me too. Uh, so it is really, and it's also a wine that's so well made. Uh, they make wine with patience here. They don't hurry the process. And uh, part of that is going to uh, allow for this wine, even once you've opened it, uh, to even, even if it was just sit on the counter, it'll still be good two, three, four days in, uh, still shining. And so, in fact, sometimes this wine to me is a better day two wine. Like uh, that food will really yeah. to soften uh, and it's even better on the second day. Uh, it's, it benefits from a decant. Uh, if you're gonna drink it all in one sitting, I would pour it into a large mason jar, put it in the refrigerator, you know, for 20 to 30 minutes and let it open up, but also get a little chill on it. But uh, the more air this wine sees, the more enjoyable it's going to be. Nice. I like it. Well, hopefully uh, people enjoy this tour of Italy and enjoy this six pack with the uh, Vinoteca. Thank you for yeah. hanging out with me today. Absolutely. Thanks for having Thanks us. Having us.